Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now one of my friends asked me if I could build them a small PC that can sit in their living room without taking up too much room, something that's perfect for HD Netflix, YouTube, as well as a little bit of gaming. So I've built a little Ryzen ITX based PC and I thought I'd record the build too. So let's get straight into it, put it together, talk about the parts I've used and then see what it can do. So the first component today is of course the case, the Antec ISK300. This comes with a 150 watt Antec power supply as well, which will be more than enough for all of our components, considering we won't be adding a discrete GPU either, as this PC's primary purpose is that of a home theatre build. Be aware that when building inside an ITX case, it can be a little more tight for room, and it can make cable management a little more complex too. So it's time to move on to the main internal components. We've got a Biostar X470 GTN motherboard here, the ITX form factor one of course, a WD Green M.2 SATA drive that has the storage capacity of 240 gigabytes. The reason it's not that large is because as I say this is primarily an HTPC so it will be plenty for all of your video watching needs. If you wanted to focus more on the gaming side of things you may be better off with a one terabyte SSD or you could always use an SSD like this and because of the case there is room to upgrade to a standard hard disk drive as well should you want to do that. We've also gone with the Ryzen 3 2200G processor, a quad core CPU with built in Vega 8 graphics and one that can still handle a few games pretty well as well providing you turn the settings down. Now because of this system's primary use I have gone with 8 gigs of 2666 dual channel memory as well. 16 gigs would be the better option if gaming is more your thing but for this sort of build I think that 8 gigs of HyperX Fury memory will be plenty and it will still allow us to play some AAA titles too. So let's put all of these things together and get these components inside of our PC case. So with all of the main components in, it's time to focus on the cables. In my opinion, the worst part of any PC build, because trying to get these things neat can sometimes be quite a pain, especially when you're working with a little case like this one. Usually, the details on where everything needs to go will be in the motherboard's handbook, but a lot of the times these days, the motherboards themselves will be labelled, so you know exactly where you should plug these little front panel headers. Now, I'm not going to be focusing too much on cable management right now I'm just gonna get everything plugged in um, where it needs to be and then perhaps I'll go back at another time and sort all of the cables out because I did notice that in the case box we did have a few little things to hold the cables in place so it would be a good idea to go back and 
get some cable management going inside this thing. The awkward positioning of the power supply doesn't really help either, but with an ITX case your choices can sometimes be a little bit limited. And I thought buying a case with a PSU included was a lot easier than trying to find a different one that would fit in here comfortably. You may have noticed as well that the Ryzen 3 2200G comes with a Wraith Stealth cooler, so it should fit in most ITX cases with ease considering there's really not that much height on it. So let's finish getting these cables in place and then after that we can turn this thing on and see what it can do. So the first thing to do was to turn the PC on and jump straight into the BIOS here. As you can see the processor is running at 35 degrees idle. It's not a bad temperature, it would be cooler I think in a bigger case, but we are quite limited for airflow. We've got the CPU fan and the system fan in here. Um, I'm actually going to set the system fan to quiet mode because this is an HTPC build. I think the quieter the better. So I'm going to do that right now. Luckily there's an option in the BIOS to set it to quiet mode and it will adjust the fan curve accordingly. So if you're watching any films, TV shows, anything like that, then the system won't be audible in the slightest. And it should help keep things a little quieter when gaming as well. When it comes to video playback in Full HD on this system or 4K, obviously there is no problem here. The 2200G can handle all of that just fine. I think the Athlon 200GE is also a pretty decent choice if watching HD films and TV programs is all you're doing. And obviously if you want a little more power, the Ryzen 5 2400G is also a decent option as well. But I think... The Ryzen 3 2200 is a nice middle ground between the two. It offers a lot more power than the Athlon and it's quite a bit cheaper, at least here in the UK, than the Ryzen 5. It's actually a pretty decent system when it comes to esports titles like Fortnite for example. Even when you want to play at full HD resolution, we've got the 8 gigs of 2666MHz RAM in here in dual channel and thankfully that's enough when paired with the processor and the onboard Vega 8 graphics to run titles like Fortnite at 1080p with a mixture of the low and medium settings. You can see we're averaging well above 60 FPS here. There will be a few frame drops, but the game never really dips below 60. It may do when you first land in the level, but aside from that, things stay pretty smooth throughout. If 30 FPS is a decent frame rate for you, then you'll be pleased to know that in older titles like The Elder Scrolls Skyrim, for example, the original game, you should be able to turn things up to high on the Ryzen 3 here and still see a respectable frame rate. I may have overdone it a little bit here because I did turn the anti-aliasing way up and because of that we did see a few drops below 30 but should you turn AA down to times 4 or turn it off completely then you probably will see closer to 60 frames per second if you drop the quality preset here as well. As I said, this isn't the remastered version of Skyrim, this is the original, but I think it still looks pretty decent with medium or high settings, and it plays very well on this APU. Now when it comes to more demanding AAA releases like Far Cry New Dawn here for example, you're going to have to run at 720p with the low preset, but you will see at least 30 FPS almost all of the time. I ran the in-game benchmark test here and as you can see, the average frame rate wasn't too bad. You can expect a few drops here and there as the combat begins to heat up, but aside from that, it was an okay experience. The same can be said for Battlefield 5, both 900p and 1080p will mean that you see less than 30 frames per second a lot of the time, but if you turn things down to the aforementioned 720p resolution, then you should see around 37 to 38 frames per second on average, but again it totally depends on the level. This is the opening level which I find takes quite a toll on the frame rate, but should you move on to one of the later levels like the tank level for example, the Ryzen 3 2200G will be able to handle it quite a bit better so you should expect to see perhaps 40 to 50 frames per second in some areas with the lowest settings too and 100% resolution scaling. So there we have it, I had quite a lot of fun building a small Ryzen 3 PC today. I don't think I've actually put together an ITX build on this channel before and I've certainly learned a few things like 
cable management is nearly impossible. That's something I do want to go back and fix, but I'm glad we managed to put the PC together, everything was working fine. Now if you want to do this yourself, it will cost a little bit more than building, say, a similar system in a bigger case because you have to take into account that you'll need a smaller motherboard, which are generally more expensive, a tiny case, which costs a bit more as well, and you've got to be sure that all of your components will fit inside. You also are pretty restricted in terms of a power supply and whether or not you can add a discrete graphics card. So I think ITX systems certainly have a fixed purpose. But nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this helps any of you out who want to build a tiny PC, something similar in spec to this. If you enjoyed it, leave a like on it, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.